you with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you are a new subscriber, welcome. Uh, this is the Puppiness Design Team Ephemera Video Hop. And so what we've done is taken one of the Puppiness kits available on Etsy. It's called the Dragonfly Days. <clears throat> it's Susan Taylor Brown's uh, Etsy shop. And we are our team, some of our team, is each making a piece of ephemera using that kit. Any piece of the kit, any page of the kit, um, different kinds of ephemera. All of the videos are linked below in the description box. So if you're one of my subscribers and you're just seeing this as the first video, um, click through that description and move on to the next video after you watch this one, of course, and uh, enjoy. So I hope you have fun. If you're here, if you've hopped here from another video, welcome, especially if this is your first time with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this adorable little, big actually, dragonfly tag. And I'm going to use a technique on the back that I sort of alluded to in my last video, um, or maybe two videos back. Uh, when I did a making tags out of tags. And so I had used a bunch of uh, clothing tags, packaging tags, things like that, that, that I had just been collecting. Um, all of which, you see, you can see, there's not, not finished with some of these. Oh, that one is. Um, see, not finished with that one. That one is. So some of these, I've got the backs finished and some of them too. But these are examples of what the background looks like using this technique. It gives you this worn sort of paint look. And so that's what we are doing today with this guy. There we go. I'm gonna use him. Okay, now, first thing you wanna do is paint the base of your chipboard, your tag or whatever it is you're using. I'm gonna throw a layer of paint on here. Um, it doesn't have to be a thick layer, but you also don't want it super, super thin because we're gonna sand this and you want the sanding, um, you want it to kind of to be, to, to be able to hold up to the sanding. Don't worry about the back. Um, you do wanna kind of grab the sides here, but we're gonna come back in later and we're going to uh, cover the back. dry enough. So it's just got this little layer here. And the next thing we're going to do here, let's, let's not, let's not take the chance of getting more paint on here than necessary. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a layer of gesso on. Okay. So my gesso is pretty dry and I'm just going to kind of reform my tag a little bit here just because of the moisture. You could wet the back of it, I think, and it would help prevent that warping, but um, but it's not bad on these thicker tags. So while I was gone, I fussy cut my fussy cut. I actually did wash my hands, but then I got more gesso on them. But anyway, I fussy cut my little dragonfly guy, and then I inked around him. So I'm going to set him aside. He is, let's see, we'll put him right there. He is ready to go. Okay, now for the fun part. The next thing we need to do is sand this down. All right, let me get, it's messy. So, um, and actually, you know, you could take this outside and sand it outside, that would work. I have glue all over my table. <laughs> Oh, squirrel. Okay, so yeah, you could take this outside. Um, you could sand it inside. It's it's not gonna generate you know huge huge uh, dust, but it is a little messy. So I recommend you know covering your workspace. So let me go get something to lay down here, and I'll be right back. I'm back. Um, I just got a piece of a thin piece of chipboard here. I, I sometimes use these to work in, and I happen to not have one that was already soiled. So. Um, so that's okay. All right, there's a bunch of different weights here, um, coarse, coarseness levels. Um, you can 
see, and you can see the difference here. You see, this is the paint coming through here, and this is the actual chipboard where I kind of ripped the piece off. It'll be fine, trust me. So don't freak out if you do that. But if, like I said, if I had used a different color aside from brown, it would be more evident. Um, like on these, that's blue. So you can kind of see the blue peeking through. Okay, I cleaned up my mess, but it's actually not that clean. But I wiped it. <laughs> I wiped it down. It's okay. Good enough. Um, okay. Now what I want to do is I want to put some ink on top of this. Now, if you like the the whiteness of the gesso and whatever color you used underneath, you're fine. You don't have to do what I'm getting ready to do. But remember, I'm trying to sort of match these up. And when I was making this one, the white was a little stark for me with where this would be used and how I wanted to use it. So... I decided to come in here and throw some ink on it. So I'm just gonna gently just sort of wipe around here with my my ink. And again, I'm just trying to tone down that white. I'm not trying to do anything crazy and I wanna get it pretty close to that color. So that's that's my base. That's my background. It's kind of it's kind of cool. It's kind of pretty. It's different. Um, <laughs> and if you've got scrapbook paper that looks like this, you don't have to do this. You can just cover the whole thing with scrapbook paper, and you're done. Okay. Next up, we are going to get these little elements ready to go. <laughs> We are going to um, clean up our mess. Next up, we're going to put some cheesecloth and um, some string back behind this. So this is cheesecloth that was regular, sort of a, you know, regular off-white, whatever-ish color that I sprayed with some spray ink. Uh, it was actually Lindy's Stamp Gang. Um, it might have been part of the moon shadow kit. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm also not 100% sure what color it was, but it's a green. It's a green, a very dark green actually, but then when you're spraying it on fabric like that, it doesn't completely take the whole thing. So it kind of gives you a lighter green, which works really, really well with this. So I'm gonna have some down back here. And I actually, when I finished this, I felt like I could have shown a little bit more of that cheesecloth, so I may do that here. Um, get just a little bit more of it out there. Uh, yeah, get no rules, right? I keep saying that, no rules, none. Remember that, no rules. I'm just gonna kind of rough it up a little bit here. Get some of the stringy stringies off. And perhaps it's kind of like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, again, he's going to be like that. They don't have to be identical. Why do I think they do? Okay. All right. Now I need some string. So what I used on this particular one was just some embroidery. Uh, it's a green embroidery floss. And if I can remember what I did with it, uh, let me grab that and I'll be right back. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of run this, just play with it in my hands a little bit and then just let it fall where it may. 
Um, I do want to try to get the end of the string where it's going to be sort of tucked up under someplace. Like that. That looks, works. And here's the end. Here's another end. So I kind of want him underneath it all, so to speak. Uh, let's get a little more over here. And you just can kind of, you know, you don't even have to play with this. You can just let it fall where it may. And just let it do its, oops, let it do its thing. I'm trying to get it at an angle here. There we go. Now we're making some progress. And it's string. You can use any kind of string. You can even use your, um, if you've got some book binding uh, floss threads that you use, that would work too. Now let's see if this works. So again, I kind of want to, kind of want to get these about like that and about like that. And I think that's going to work. The string to me represents a little bit of motion that the dragonfly would be making. I, that maybe that's a stretch, but I just like the extra effect that it gave. Um, and so I'm not going to glue the string down right yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two pieces down on top of the string. The glue will grab it and hold it. And then I'll go back in in little places where I think are vulnerable to being pulled or yanked. I will go back and put a little bit of glue under these parts that aren't captured from the glue I'm doing here. I hope that makes sense. But if you just watch and here's what we're going to do. to use clear embossing powder. Let me get my little base here. Um, Versamark embossing ink. And I'm just gonna take this guy and just push him down in here. I've got some tweezers here somewhere. I'm just gonna push him down on here and try to get him a nice, good sticking to the, um, to this pad. And yes, I'm gonna get it all over my fingers too. Just gonna press him down a couple times. Now I do this twice. So let's pull him off. And he's wet. So I'm going to sprinkle him with clear embossing powder. And then I'm going to use my heat gun, melt that embossing powder, and then I give him a nice sheen. He'll be pretty shiny. Get a good coating on there. Don't be afraid to use extra embossing powder, <laughs> you can dump it back into your container, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Um, let me grab hold of him, shake him just a little bit. I need two hands. I need four hands for this. Oh, see, I probably, probably shouldn't have used card heavy board for this because it would have been easier to fold over and dump in here if I hadn't have. Okay. Now, get that out of the way so it doesn't get hot. Just going to lay him down and warm him up. He definitely needs to cool a little bit more this time, but you can kind of see, see if I can get the, you see the shine. Um, and I'm not a glittery, glimmery, shiny kind of person. As a matter of fact, if I'm using, I don't even like using um, glossy uh, books or magazine pages or anything in my journals, but on something like this where you've got this background that is so, um, flat in color, uh, in, shame, in sheen. It's just, it's not, you know, it's just very matte. And then you put this dragonfly on top that's got this shine to it. It just really makes him pop. And it's just a nice texture and a nice added uh, something, something going on there. We are almost done, you guys. Almost. There's one more step after. Okay, I think he's probably dry now. Yeah, let me get him. Well, actually, let's 
We're gonna leave this uh, board out because I'm getting ready to do something else with it. All right, he needs to be glued on, of course. Um, so I just need to kind of play with how he's glued on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push him down on the top of the corget first, and then I'll take his wings and kind of touch the tips of his wings onto the paper. Again, just so that it's not so he's not vulnerable to being ripped off when it's used. I just like um, I just like to make sure, to the extent of my ability, that things are going to last. So I'm not putting any glue um, in the middle of the wings just because I don't think I need it. So I'm gonna uh, let's see where do we want him. Maybe we want him a little bit of an angle like that. And then the cardboard, this does take a second to set up. And hopefully it will cooperate more than with you, more than it is me right now. You need like 50 thumbs and fingers and to do this just because he's die cut. So I got to touch each one of his ends. <laughs> It doesn't help when you have glue on your fingers. Ah, my fingers are sticky. And this little guy right here does not want to... There we go. There, I think that, that's got it. So now he's on here. He's shiny. What's missing? There's one more step I need to take that um, is one of my favorite... Not my favorite, but it's just a fun thing to do. And that is to splatter the guy with some gesso, white gesso splatters, paint splatters. Um, before I do that though, I want to, I don't want any paint splatters directly on him and I really don't want any on my cardboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this cardboard and I'm going to cover some things up here like this. And actually, maybe this bigger piece would have been smarter in the first place. Yeah. Like this. There we go. Let's see. Let's go like that. And that. That ought to... And that. Okay. That ought to prevent me from getting paint splatters all over my guy. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just going to take over, right over here on my board. I'll just squirt it out so you can see it. I'm going to I've got embossing powder on here. Hang on, clean up your mess. I'm going to squirt out some gesso right there. And I just put way more than I needed. Just a couple drops because the next step after that, and I don't have a brush here. Hold on, I need a brush. A fan brush works well like this, but really, truly, and let uh, any thinner, brush is going to be fine. Just don't get, you know, just don't do a great big uh, two inch paintbrush kind of thing because then you would have splatters all over your house. But just add some water, get it mixed up, get it nice and juicy and runny. Definitely do not want this to be thick at all. And then you're going to take your brush and you're gonna hold it over. And I usually take a pair of scissors, like the end of a scissors, and tap. It's got something on it. Okay, and tap. And I focus um, on specific areas, like so. And sometimes it's hard, you know, sometimes you get a little heavier than you probably intended. Um, sometimes takes a little bit to get enough. You just keep playing with it. Um, I'm looking at this guy, trying to decide. I, I think I've got plenty. That was easy, right? Just a couple taps. Uh, let's do a little bit more down here, like that. Okay, so now what's happened is, let's get, let's get a wipey. I've got a box of wipies that dried out on me that are perfect for, I can, there's only a couple left, but. Perfect for cleaning things up like this. 
Um, you see how I had way, way more than I needed. It doesn't take much. You do want to get your brush nice and saturated, but it really doesn't take much at all. Um, yeah, and, and it's a nice, it's a fun mess. It's a fun mess to make. Okay, now I can, uh, let's see. Let me use this to put my brush on for the moment while we finish this up. All right, now I like to roll this. Um, the problem is, is there's probably too much dimension, so let's just let's just smooth it out with our hands because I don't want to squish him too bad. I just just helps get that glue squished, but I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to squish my dragonfly. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim this off. All right, now we're going to put the eyelet on. And then we're going to be done. And we are officially now for real, for real done so here you go here's the first one that i made off camera just so to, i could kind of get a feel for what i wanted to do for you all today and here's the one i made today and they are buddies mr and mrs maybe right boy dragonfly and girl dragonfly i don't know um but that's that's the set that's the tags they're done and I really, really, really appreciate you stopping by. And I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I really, really hope that you go to the description box below and click on the next link and hop on through to, um, to some very talented designers and artists. And you get to see some fun stuff and some different stuff. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for stopping by and we'll talk soon. Bye.